Here I've got an old MacBook Pro, 7 years to be exact, so mid-2015. Given that it's been 7 years, it's not in pristine condition. Exceptionally bad are the cooling fans, which are constantly on, and the horrendous battery life. We'll see more on that later. But today, we'll be tearing down the MacBook to see all its innards, and then giving it new life. We'll be replacing the battery to fix that terrible battery life, and to further increase longevity, we'll be replacing the SSD, boosting the storage from 512GB to 1TB. To do all of this, I'm following iFixit's guide, which I'll link in the description. If you also want to repair your laptop or device, you can buy iFixit's kits or, if those are too expensive, you could search online for your desired part and just do your repairs following iFixit's guide, so as long as you have all the necessary tools, which is what I did. Keep in mind that this is not going to be a detailed tutorial. I'll be explaining some of the steps carried out, so you can follow along, but I highly recommend pulling up an actual guide alongside this if you want to actually repair your own device. Alright, let's get started. For this process, you'll need the following materials. First things first, let's remove the lower casing using our P5 Pentalobe screwdrivers. Make sure all the screws are well organized from here on out. We'll disconnect the battery. airport and camera cables. Keep in mind these are very fragile and also a pain to put back in. Now the I.O. board cable. We'll pretty much only be using the T5 Torx screwdriver from now on. Next, the fans. For many steps, including this one, each screw is a different length. Make sure you keep them organized. Keep them in the same position that they were originally in, in the device, have a screw magnet, whatever the case may be, keep these organized. Since the casing of the fans is made of plastic, it's definitely safer to remove them, as the acetone we'll use later could damage the plastic. The SSD comes out next. It's a tight fit, so you'll have to wiggle it a bit, but do not lift it too high or snap it because that will damage it. The I.O. board itself is coming out next. And now we'll move down to the logic board. We'll remove the touchpad connector. There's a small rubbery cap here by the heatsink. Now we fully remove the logic board. Remember again, every screw is of a different length, so keep them organized. Microphone cable. Left speaker connector, keyboard data cable, right speaker connector, keyboard backlight connector, display data cable. Don't lift it upwards, just keep pulling it to the side, otherwise you'll damage it. MagSafe 2 board. And now we pull the entire logic board out. Left speaker. Right speaker.
And now to the battery. As you probably noticed already, these battery cells are very swollen. At this point, you really should get them replaced, because not only is battery life going to be horrendous, it could actually pose a safety hazard. To actually remove the battery, first we have to get rid of the trackpad ribbon cable. Let's remove these two screws, and now we're ready to begin the actual removal process. For safety, we'll put some aluminum foil over the display just in case some of the adhesive remover drips and gets there. If it does, it might damage the display. Now, we'll lift up the laptop so it forms a slope because gravity will help us with some of the removal process. For adhesive remover itself, if you bought the iFixit kit, you'll have a bottle. But here's a little secret, it's literally acetone. So you can use acetone if you have any laying around. Any nail polish remover works as long as it's 90 to 95 or 100% acetone. Supposedly isopropyl alcohol also works, but I haven't tested that personally. You'd also want a high concentration, like 90% or above. Nail polish. Okay, there we go. And squirt it. Oh, I just... <laughs> oh no, I just dropped it in! I'm a dumb... Wait, what'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna dissolve them. Oh, get it out! How do I get it out? What the heck? Wait. <laughs> so we'll drip some down and let it flow between the battery and the casing. After a little bit, we'll use a card to cut and add more space between the battery and the casing. Make sure whatever card you use is thin, flexible, and durable. Here we're just using regular bicycle playing cards. We'll lift it up, and then move to the next portion. Now, flip your setup around and repeat the procedure for the other side. For the middle two cells, slide cards in between and on the sides and put the adhesive remover in the slot. After a while, you'll notice that there is a space between the battery and the casing forming, so fully remove that cell and do the same thing for the other middle cell. Now you can take out the battery and install your own new battery. There might be adhesive strips on the back that you can remove before you put it into your device. Now we'll put everything back in order. When we reach the SSD step, I'm actually going to put in a new one of my own. Whoa! What was that? Did it stab the floor? What was that?
Now, everything is in order and working. I reinstalled macOS, set everything up, and this old 7-year MacBook Pro is up and running smoothly again. This was actually my first time doing a teardown of any device, but luckily I had Jeffrey with me to help and guide me. And overall, tearing down a device was definitely a fun experience that I highly recommend to all of you, whether it be your phone, tablet, or laptop. 